this place was first dreamt up, it was a china clay pit. It had absolutely no soil in it and couldn't grow a single thing. They had to import 80,000 tonnes worth of green waste in order to turn it into the garden that it is now. project is an extraordinary space because it takes architecture and intimately marries it with the landscape around it to create a place where people can come and learn about the world around them. Yeah, we wanted to demonstrate that regeneration was possible, so we thought let's take a really derelict site 15 metres below the water table with no soil in it, in the most difficult area in the country. It's um, one of the most economically depressed areas in the country. And let's put the biggest greenhouse in the world in the bottom of it, so you can't see it from anywhere. They're like a cross between lean-to greenhouses and duvets. So if you take the principle of a lean-to greenhouse, the wall at the back absorbs the sun in the day and, and releases it at night, so that, that keeps it warm. Mm -hmm. Um, the duvet principle is the, the hexagons which contain this foil which is called ethyl tetrafluoroethylene for the chemists amongst you. There's three layers of it and we blow them apart with air and it's like the tog value on your duvet. We can make them thin or we can make them fat and they've got air handling units around the base so we can control it all quite well. And the plants also create their own climate mm -hmm. inside. The rainforest biome is the largest rainforest in captivity. And the weirdest thing about the actual structure of that biome is it weighs exactly the same as the weight of the air inside it. So it's just like this sort of light bubble to create this climate that we can keep a rainforest inside. This is an extraordinary architectural feat. This biome is over 200 metres long, 150 metres wide, and I'm standing roughly about 45 metres high. And this is all with no internal props. So this is the core. This is essentially a large classroom for all ages where people can find out about how to tackle some of the issues our environment faces. The building is based on the Fibonacci series, which I suppose is most aptly recognisable in a sunflower when it's in seed. Those spirals of seed are designed so that each seed gets exactly the right amount of space and is not competing or outcompeting the seed next door to it, and is an incredibly strong structure for a roof. It cracked a nut. <laughs> See? Those are hazelnuts. It's like the metaphor that like, you can really overcomplicate things when nature has very simple ways of processing stuff. In terms of the future of what all this place is about, to, to be honest, we built this place because we just wanted to have a go at, at building a, a global garden in this hole in the middle of Cornwall, you know, and a group of us, about five of us got together and we started off with no money, we had absolutely nothing and it, it was a bit of a gas actually just trying to, to build it. And, and we did want to tell the story of plants and people. And then we sort of looked out at the world and, and we thought, well, maybe we can help apply some of these skills outside. So we're now working on projects locally, nationally and internationally for the future because we're in the 21st century. It's a time of change and how can we adapt? And so this place is just a demonstration of how to do it. More than just architecture, Eden Project is about relationships about the relationships of the building and the landscape and the landscape and the people. And that has brought about a great deal of regeneration to this area, which makes this a rather remarkable project. <laughs>